Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we're going to be dealing with the segment addition postulate. We're going to start off with some easy ones, but if you're looking for some harder ones that involve some equations, I would recommend just jumping to around the five minute mark. Okay? So, the segment addition postulate by definition is if you add two smaller portions together, you can get a bigger portion. And with these easy problems, you can maybe just kind of logic your way through it. So notice how from H to F, the entire way across is 10. And we got one from G to F, which means what do we have to add with one to get to 10? And the answer to that is nine. All right, and now some of your brains will be able to work that way and some of you might struggle with that and that's okay. Another thing you can do is you can replace that X, uh, question mark with an X and then you can be thinking, from here to here is x, and that g to f is 1, so then you could be saying x added with 1. If you add the two smaller sections together, it must equal the whole way across, which is 10. And if you add x plus 1 and equal it to 10, then you can solve by subtracting 1 over minus 1 minus 1 to get x equals 9 that way. All right. Now, sometimes you don't need to set up the equation for the easy ones, but if you need to, go ahead, and it does help to practice that to be able to do the harder ones as it, the road gets tougher, all right? So, um, next one I'm gonna try is K to L here. So for this one, it might be easier to set up the equation because you got nine from here to here, and then 11 from J to K, and we're looking for K to L, so I'm gonna put an X right there for that, and if we add this chunk with that chunk with this chunk, all three together, all three will add to equal 26. So if we add nine with 11 and x, that would equal 26. And some of us might need the equation for that, others might not. You can combine like terms or uh, you could subtract the 11 and the nine over, it's up to you, but I think it would be better to combine those to get 20 plus x is equal to 26. Subtract the 20 over and you find out that x is equal to six, which in this case is KL is equal to six. All right, moving right along, we're just gonna keep on trucking. We got our first one that I would consider to be a little bit funkier, all right? So we know that the entire way across is equal to 49, all right? That's important. And uh, we also know that we have these three sections, the E to D, the B, D to C, and the C to B, all adding up to 49. And we only got one of those things provided, the 16. So in that case, in this case, I am also going to need this 30 down here. And I'm gonna start with the 30 because if I have the 30, if I look here, 30 is equal to 16 plus this C to B number, all right? So you can either call it X for C to B, but I think for just practice case, I'm gonna call it CB, all right? CB is representing X. So if we were to add CB together with 16, it would equal 30, which means if we subtract the 16 over, if we subtract 16 from 30, you would get 14 is equal to uh, the CB section. So if we know that this is 14, well now we have a little bit more information that we can figure out what E to C is eventually because we need to now get figure out what E to D is. Well, we got 16 here and we got 14 there. You could set up an equation where you can go 16 plus 14 plus what we could call x plus x is equal to 49. You could also recognize, well, 16 plus 14 is 30. How much more do I have to add to 30 to get to 49? Which is what the equation tells you as well. We got 30 plus x equals 49. So if you subtract the 30 from the 49, you get 19. Be careful because 19 is from here to here. 16 is from here to here. We're not asked to find 19 nor 16, we're asked to find E all the way to C, and E all the way to C is equal to 16 plus 19. Well, 16 plus 19 is equal to E to C, which of course is equal to 35. Ta-da. All right. The next one we're going to be doing is going to be without the information provided, without the drawing, and 
it will normally start with something saying that A, B, and C are all collinear. Collinear is just a fancy name for saying a part of the same line. So if we have A to C is what we're looking for. We are provided A to B and B to C. So I always recommend um, reading further because I didn't read this part. Point B is perfectly between A and C. So you just need to put a point B in between an A and a C. It doesn't matter exactly how well you draw it, but it does need to be in between A and C somewhere, not necessarily in the middle. And then fill in what they give you. A, B is 16. So this is 16. B to C is 12. What are we finding? A to C. Well, this isn't that hard. A to C is the whole way across. You have to add the two smaller parts to get the whole way across, which is this 16 plus 12. 28 would equal A to C. All right, no problem there. We are about to approach the harder problems if you've been waiting for that. Here we go. So here we have um, three different things and they're all with X's. So this is going to be a big upgrade from the previous problems. So A and C, B is still in between. So we're still gonna draw that. We got A, we got B in between. Be careful because sometimes they put a different letter in between a and C, that's not B. Then we have to fill in the entire way across is 3x plus 3. That's the whole way across. A to B is negative 1 plus 2x, so I'm putting it in between them. And then B to C is 11. So we're going to be having to add up the two smaller chunks to equal the whole thing. Well, the whole thing is 3x plus 3. The two smaller chunks are right here. So don't be intimidated by it. You just write it. Negative 1 plus 2x plus the 11, that's the two smaller parts, would equal the whole way across, which is the 3x plus 3. Okay. Now we just solve. All right. So hopefully we're good at solving equations. If we're not, I recommend watching a video on that. Um, Negative 1 and 11 combine to make 2x plus regular 10 equals 3x plus 3. Then we're going to subtract either the 2x or the 3x. I would rather subtract the 2x because then it would leave me with a positive 1x and I'm out of room. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And that would leave me with 10 is equal to 1x plus 3. Subtract the 3 and you get 7 is equal to 1x which means x is equal to 7, all right? Always double check with geometry to make sure they don't just want you to find x, but they actually want you to maybe plug in for something else, but in this case, they just want x, all right? Moving on, we might do two more. Two more seems like a good play. We got one, two, three things adding up to the entire way across. We have to add up these three segment additions to get the whole way across, thus doing the segment addition postulate. So x minus 9, oops, x minus 6 plus 9 plus the 2x minus 10, 19, I can't read, 19 would equal 23. So these three sections put together, bing, bang, boom, equal the 23. Combine any like terms that you have. We have an x, we have a 2x. x and 2x makes 3x when you put them together. And then we have negative 6 with 9. That makes 3. Combined with negative 19, you could add up all three of those in your calculator. And if you do that, you end up with a negative 16 would equal 23. Yep, negative 16. Add 16 over. If we add 16 to both sides, you get 3x is equal to 39, which means x, of course, is equal to 13 when you divide by 3. Okay, one more. This one is probably another upgrade because it looks harder, to be honest, and it wants us to find C all the way to E. In order to find C all the way to E, we have to first figure out what is CD. All right, well, let's think about that. Um, I'm going to call this part Y, just, or I could call it CD, just for now. I know that 3X plus 47 and y would have to equal 27 plus x. I know that, okay? I also know that y and 10 would have to equal this chunk right here from x to tw x plus 26. So 
y plus 10 would have to equal x plus 26. All right, well, in both of these cases, we, we got two variables. So we're going to have to go back into our like algebra one brains, but it is possible. Um, we can either solve for x or solve for y. I'm going to recommend solving for y in this case. I'm going to move the 3x over, and I'm going to move the 47 over. So I'm going to move 3x minus 3x minus 3x, and I'm going to subtract 47 and subtract 47. I feel like this is going to be limited on space, so I'm doing two steps in one. y would equal 27 minus 47 is equal to negative 20. x minus 3x is equal to negative 2x. And then, because we know what y is equal to, y equals negative 20 minus 2x, you can substitute that in. So this is a, indeed a much harder problem. Negative 20 minus 2x plus 10 is equal to x plus 26. Okay, now we're just gonna solve for x. We're gonna add the 2x over. We're gonna combine like terms. Negative 20 and 10 makes negative 10. We're gonna add the 2x to the other side, which I am going to do mentally. If I add the 2x right here, we would equal that to 3x plus 26. Subtract 26 over. If you subtract 26 over, you get negative 36 is equal to 3x, which means that x would equal negative 12. Now notice that we're not looking for x. We're looking for c all the way to e. Okay, so c all the way to e is this chunk from here, c all the way to e. Well, we found out what x is. We can plug that in for x, negative 12 plus 26 is equal to 14 for c all the way to e. All right, now there are some other ways to do that. Um, that to me is one of the bigger ones uh, that I find to be useful is to do a substitution, but you can find the difference between these two because the difference is the overlap. And then after you find the difference between those two, you should be able to equal it to the 3x plus 47 and the 10, but I don't have enough room for that. So that's just a different method. Your teacher might show you a different method for that. That one's a hard one. And because it was so hard, if you watched all the way up to this point, I would appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe. And otherwise, you stay positive, my friends, and I will see y'all later. Bye.